I'm going to speak on the theme, staying steady in the storm. But you know, the Bible talks about different kinds of storms. And one of the storms that I want to look at today, you can find in your Bibles, and I invite you to take it and turn to Acts 27 and follow along today and see how this storm works. It's the big storm. It's the storm that uh, really affected a lot of people. Let me give you a little summary while you're turning to it and looking for it. First of all, uh, Paul was arrested by the Romans. He had been preaching. The Jewish people were getting stirred up, and the Romans didn't like it when the Jewish people were all stirred up and upset. And so they came in, and they found out it was Paul causing the trouble, so they arrested him. In the meantime, they weren't treating Paul like they were supposed to treat him. And so it got to the point where Paul said, now wait a second, I'm a Roman citizen, and you can't treat me like this. I appeal to Caesar. Oh, things began to change very quickly then. And it wasn't long. They got him on a boat and they were headed to Rome. That is the summary of the story. Let me give you a few of the details. First of all, we look at this thing and I say to myself, Paul is not the reason for this storm. Paul, in fact, tried to warn them. If you look at verse 21, it says, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. You you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. Yeah, it wasn't Paul's fault. And it wasn't God's fault either. Sometimes when there's a storm, we blame God. But look what it says in the very next verse. Verse 22, last night, this is Paul saying, an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar and this next phrase, and God has graciously given you the lives of all that sail with you. It wasn't God's will to punish any of those people because they had arrested Paul. It wasn't God's will that uh, they were going to be in some kind of trouble because they were doing something God was against. In fact, God was on their side and he was doing everything he could to make sure they all arrived safely. God was not bringing judgment upon them. So today what I want to do is encourage you to make choices, right choices. To look at this, we're going to look at the very verse 29 in uh, the end of the story, Acts 27, verse 29. It says, fearing that they would dash against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and they prayed for daylight. Today I want you to focus on faith. We're going to drop four anchors and we're going to pray for daylight. So these four anchors is what keeps me steady in the storm. And I think they'll do the same for you. The first anchor is God's presence. Don't, it says, an angel of God stood beside me. I just love that verse, what Paul said. He said, in the midst of all that's going on, the angel of God came and stood right beside me. Storms do not scare God. And God is as near to you as you allow him to be. There's a second anchor, and that is God's purpose. Look at the next verse, verse 24. This is when Paul said to, uh, this is when the angel said to Paul, don't be afraid, you must stand trial. You see, storms do not give away or chase God away from his purpose and it will always prevail. God's plan and purpose always prevail. You see, God, let me give you the third anchor. That's God's promise. This is what Paul said in the next verse, verse 25. I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Remember this, storms cannot block the word of God. There's a fourth anchor, and that is God's provision. Verse 44 says, everyone reached the land in safety. God protected everyone, even those that were tired and weary and weak, those that had been cast into the ocean, those that only had a small board holding on to, some that was just too weak to even swim. God made the provision for them to get to the shore safely. When you can't see a way, God always provides. I've received a number of testimonies just during this pandemic 
where people have said that God gave him a promise and God delivered it. It's just wonderful to see what God is going to do. Yes, I can promise you, if God promised it, God will provide it. <clears throat> Does that mean that every Christian who uh, catches the virus is uh, not going to not catch the virus or not die? No, it doesn't mean that at all. I have some pastor friends that have caught it and have died. What it does mean, God will take care of his people. He will provide a way for them. Remember this, storms cannot destroy the children of God. I don't know how long this pandemic will last, but I can tell you this, whatever the storm, I'm going to stay steady. Because I have an anchor in God's presence. I remember that storms don't scare God away. And I, can't get, and I can get as close to him as I want to be. I have a second anchor. And that's God's purpose. I remember that, God, that storms do not change God's plan for our life. If God called it, if God said it was going to happen, it's going to happen. The third anchor I have is God's promises. I remember that storms cannot block the word of God. If God said it, it's true. And I have an anchor in God's provision. Remember, storms cannot destroy the children of God. 